Good e good morning, not good evening. Good morning, dear friends, from a rather wet, grey, dull, and slightly cold Wednesday morning. I think Brother Sun has taken some time out. It's good to welcome our dear sister Jan on our live stream channel and to all our friends on Facebook. <clears throat> and this morning we light our light and we pray especially for all God's children who are on holiday at this time. But we remember the many tourists on holiday in southern France where the campfires are so out of control that many have had to spend the night on the beach. So we pray, especially for the young children. Amen. <clears throat> and now we call on the Holy Spirit of God to guide our thoughts and our hearts this morning. And now we begin with our Wednesday morning prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai. And we say together, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Wednesday morning we commune with the angel of the sun saying angel of the sun enter my solar center and give the fire of life to my entire body as these words are spoken you contemplate the rising sun and experience the accumulated solar energies radiate through your solar center situated at the solar plexus sending healing life force energy through your entire body and we welcome Joseph Sue and Carl Pierpoint good morning to you both on Facebook <clears throat> and we begin with our opening prayer and thanksgiving from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona <clears throat> O Sun behind all suns I give you greeting this new day. Let all creation praise you. Let the daylight and the shadows praise you. Let the fertile earth and the swelling sea praise you. Let the winds and the rain, the lightning and the thunder praise you. Let all that breathes, both male and female, praise you. And I shall praise you, O God of all life, and I give you greeting this new day. And now we come to our first reading <coughs> this morning. And it's a reading from the UCB, the United Christian Broadcast little booklet that comes every quarter. And the theme for Wednesday is when God calls you. And the author refers us to a quote from Isaiah in the Old Testament Bible, Isaiah 48, verse 15. I have called him, and he will succeed in his mission. <clears throat> God told Jeremiah, before you were born, I set you apart for a special work. When God decides to use you, five things happen. First, there is a call. God asks common people to do uncommon things, like Peter getting out of the boat and walking on the water. Second, there is fear. When God called Moses to stand before Pharaoh, he said, I am not a good enough speaker. Use somebody else. Third, there is reassurance. The thought of filling Moses' shoes must have been shaken Joshua to the core. So God told him, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And fourth, there is a decision. Sometimes we say yes to God and sometimes we say no. 
When we say yes, we live with joy. When we say no, we forfeit that joy. But there's always a decision. And fifth, there is a changed life. Those who say yes to God's call don't walk perfectly, not by a long shot, but because they say yes, they learn and grow even from their failings and failures. Indeed, their failures often become part of their ability to minister to others. And those who say no to God, they're changed too. They become a little harder, a little more resistant to his calling and a little more likely to say no next time. Is God calling you today? Is God calling you today? Maybe it has to do with your work or your relationships or your money or facing your biggest fear. God's call will go to the core of who you are and what you do. Saying yes to him is the best decision you will ever make. <clears throat> Let us stay with those words just for a moment. Is God calling you to a more fruitful life, a loving relationship with God? Do you give lip service to God <clears throat> and your hearts are closed? I've seen it in the monastic life as a young monk many, many years ago. You would see the monk so devout in prayer, oh, dripping in holiness. But we discovered over the years that many gave lip service. Their hearts were closed through fear through disappointment for whatever reason but is your heart closed to God today it's so easy it's so easy to close your heart and just dismiss God as you would an annoying neighbor in our morning offering we always say Lord how may I be of service to you today how may I be of service to you? How may I serve you today? Show me. Well, let us come to the hymn from Sing Your Faith from the Unitarian Hymn Book. And it's hymn number 210. And it's when the song of life is ringing. That's the theme. When the song of life is ringing through the green fields and the wood and the love of God is singing in your mind and in your blood. Holy angels come to give you wondrous gifts of joy and peace and the soul will leap with rapture in a dance of glad release. But when life's harsh road has brought us only hurt and grief and pain and the darkness hides the promise we feel now was made in vain. Sad the song we sing amidst tears from the well of human voice, sorry, from the well of human woe. For no angel's song the soul hears where the heart is stricken low. Yet in life, if we stay faithful to the trust we cannot shake, if we honor our Creator with this life we did not make, we shall find how God supports us, God who's true in everything, brings us through the dark and lean times to that place where angels sing. Wow, I love that last bit. Yet in life, if we stay faithful to the trust we cannot shake, if we honor our creator with this life we did not make, we shall find how God supports us. God who's true in everything, 
brings us through the dark and lean times to that place where angels sing. Oh, what lovely words. Maybe some of us gathered here this morning are feeling a little fractious, weary, maybe tired, maybe anxious or worried. And I noticed that, was it Kevin that left a message to pray for someone? I can't find it on the chat here. So if you would, just type it in again for me. I'd be willing to remember your dear friend in prayer. There's something else I want to read to you, if I may. And, oh, here we are. It's from the little book of Rumi, the garden of the soul and the heart of the spirit. And Rumi just, he just has that natural gift of being able to convey the message from the heart of the Supreme God. And his words really do touch the soul. Man is hidden behind his words, his tongue is a curtain over the door of his soul. When a gust of wind lifts the curtain, the secret of the interior is exposed. You can see if there is gold or snakes, pearls or scorpions hidden inside. Thoughtless speech spills easily out of man while the wise one keeps silent. Faulty eyes see the moon double and that gazing in perplexity is like a question. Once you connect with divine light, the question and the answer become one. But if you only hear the answer, do not be fooled, for the ear is simply a go-between. While the eye perceives reality directly, the ear relies on the promise of words. From words alone you cannot know fire. Do not rely on knowledge derived from others. There is no certainty until you burn. Make the ear sharp so it becomes an eye. If not, words become entangled in the ear and the truth can never reach the heart. The light that is life to the wise, the eyes of the weak cannot endure. The fire for melting iron is not suitable. For cooking apples, they need a gentle heat. But these flames are too gentle for a dervish, who, like the iron, draws willingly that fiery heat unto himself. Bearing hardship, happy and red, he goes straight into the heart of the flames, setting his whole being ablaze. He is the heart of the world, for the theatre of God's actions is not the body, but the heart but the heart. And I guess the reason why so many become disillusioned today is because they're mainly working as head operatives. They're processing everything in the head, in the ego, and the heart doesn't get a look in. Embracing the divine, as we do through Celtic Franciscan spirituality, we embrace it through nature, we see God in nature, and we sit in the silence of this beautiful cathedral of God, and we listen to the sounds of nature, the birds singing, the senses are on fire with the gifts that nature brings to us. And when we still the, the mind with all its anxious thoughts and fears, and take a deep breath and breathe in the energies of Mother Earth and allow spirit to speak to us, we can hear. But there are other voices that are not of God that convince us they're of God, but they're not of God. And they really do dishearten us and they cause disquiet and confusion. 
And that's why I guess many of us need a spiritual director who can see things from a different perspective. And it's so easy to get bogged down with minutiae and guilt and fear. But let us come to this table of love with an open heart. Let us use the most precious gift that God has given to you and me, and that is the gift of free will, the gift of choosing to be here, to be in the presence of love, in the presence of a God who truly cares for us and who has a desire for us that we experience God's love in a tangible way. Coming to this little book of peace prayers, we're leading up now to our intercessions, but I've opened this beautiful book of peace prayers from the world's faiths, and the section is on sharing. In Psalm 32, verse 21 of the Old Testament Bible, we read, the righteous gives generously. From Zoroastrian, we read, inspire us, O wise Lord, to live in mutual understanding and trust and peace. We are brothers and sisters, all belonging to one great human family, and we are children of the one Father, Mother, God. Thou, O wise Lord, Teach us to live as comrades, all in willing fellowship and loving fraternity, in brotherly and sisterly helpfulness and cooperation. And from the Baha'i faith we read, gladden our hearts through the fragrance of your love. Brighten our eyes through the light of your guidance. Delight our ears through the melody of your work and shelter us all in the stronghold of your providence. For you have created all humanity and have decreed that we shall all belong to the same household. And from the Hindu Vedic hymn we read, we pray for greater understanding of human independence interdependence. We pray for communities that are divided among themselves. We pray for groups of people of different racial or religious backgrounds living next to one another. We pray for all who seek to heal ancient wounds. We pray for those who still cling to all bitterness. May God betide all people. May the sovereign rule the earth, following the righteous paths. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. And now for our intercessions. There is no plant in the ground but tells of your beauty, O Christ. There is no creature on the earth there is no life in the sea, but proclaims your goodness. There is no bird on the wing. There is no star in the sky. There is nothing beneath the sun, but is full of your blessing. Lighten our understanding of your presence all around us, O Christ. Kindle our will to be caring for creation. And we pray now for this coming day. We pray this morning when we lit our candle for all God's children on holiday, especially in southern France, where raging fires have destroyed two campsites and where many of the tourists, a lot of British as well, with young children, are actually living on the beach to protect them from being engulfed by flames. But many have lost everything. So we pray for God's children in that situation that must be pretty horrendous and fearsome. But I want to pray for each one of you here. And I want to pray for Kevin. And now we look at all the requests and we pray, ah, 
It's Carl Pierpoint. Can you remember my uncle Kevin, how who passed away yesterday? May he rest in God's peace. Let us spend a moment for you, dear Carl. And let us all share with you God's love to give you the strength, to give you the strength to know that your Uncle Kevin is in a safer and happier place and is now free of all suffering. And may his soul rest in the arms of a loving God. Amen. For Cuckoo Benjamin and for our dear Jan, Hello there, dear Jan. For Kaj Lovit, good morning, dear brother. How are you? And blessings to you too. For J dear Janet, good morning, dear friend. And for our dear brother, John Chapman, good morning. Good morning, your eminence. For Regina Redmond, Florence Jane, Caroline Jennifer Knight, Carol Backer, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Indeed, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. For Nana Prakasam, for our dear Linda, dear Linda, who lives not far from us. Good morning, dear Linda and Brother Brian, or as we call you, the Bishop. And good morning, dear Brother Skip. Lovely to have you. And our dear sister Sue is with us on the other channel. We bring all God's children to this table of love. We bring those who are hurting today in mind, in body and spirit. We bring our amazing religious leaders who try to steer their members, the children of God, through love and acts of kindness for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for His Holiness, the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat Hanh, and we mustn't forget our reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth, head of the Anglican Church and sovereign ruler and head of the Anglican Communion worldwide, and an amazing lady, an amazing lady. But we pray for all, of all faiths, who've surrendered their heart to a loving God who's known by many names and none. We remember the men and women who've consecrated their lives to God in ministry and professional life. I pray for my brothers and sisters in the Teo community who've chosen to live a simpler life, the hermetic life from their own home. I pray for those who've recently joined us to test their vocation, where they give their heart to God for unity and peace from their monastery without walls, where we have no rules or regulations. The only rule is to receive God's love and to be willing to walk that simple path like Francis in trust, in trust. But we pray for those in service who are weary today. There are many of God's children in ministry who are downtrodden by bureaucracy. We remember them. And we remember those light workers who are struggling with all the energetic shifts that are happening in our beautiful universe. Let us now be still. And as we reach out to touch one another, let us sense that we are touching each other's hand. And in the very center is the divine. And we now give to our Father, Mother, God, all that ails us, that troubles us, by naming it, by blessing it, and by releasing it to a God of love, in a mindset of gratitude, and that we leave it with God in trust. We pray. We pray.
And now in the stillness of this moment, you and I surrender our hearts to God's amazing heart. And we do that by trusting in a loving God who created you and me to experience joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You will have come across from time to time. Well, it's true. The moment you surrender all to God and let God lead you rather than your head lead you, you will experience the peace, the love and the joy that is so rightfully yours. So claim it now and just allow the light guide you to places of peace and harmony. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother, God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here today our daily bread. Forgive us our indiscretions, our selfishness and stubbornness of heart. Lead us not astray, but protect us from those negative forces of evil despondency, depression, that alienate our heart from God's loving heart. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer is from the Book of Celtic Prayers, from Iona. And it's a beautiful Celtic prayer. Bless to us, O God, our soul that comes from on high. Bless to us, O God, our body that is of earth. Bless to us, o, o God, each thing our eye sees, each sound our ear hears. Bless to us, O God, each scent that goes to our nostril, each taste that goes to our lips, each ray that guides our way. And as we blow out this light, we give thanks to a loving God who has many names and none for inviting each one of us here to celebrate all that is sacred within us, God's love. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve a loving God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum. Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken in your heart that you are a beloved of God and that your life does matter. Amen. If this is your bedtime, sleep well. And if you're beginning your day here, wrap up well because it's grey, it's wet, and it's pouring with rain. But that's good, it's water in the gardens. Till we meet again, lots of love. Bye-bye.